Tomorrow is new comic book day. What are you getting, Beardo? Ooh, uh, as McClay pulls up League of Comic Geeks, uh, Nice House on the Lake is back finally after a little a little bit of hiatus. Uh, issue 7 is out. I'm looking forward to reading that. This will be the first time in quite some time that I picked up a DC book on, well, Wednesday, which is still yeah. my new comic book day is Wednesday. The trade for the first volume is out tomorrow, too. Is it really? Nice. Yeah. That makes That's sense. a creepy cover right there, man. Oh, yeah. So you're not grateful for all this shit here? How about some rats? <laughs> <laughs> it's I'm looking too. forward to that. And then as far as, as far as like collectability goes, there's a lot of talk behind Star Wars High Republic 15 right now. So I'm going to be really looking into that as some of you guys that watch my content regularly know that I pretty much buy all Star Wars copies and covers and everything coming out. So... Well, you know, I think that the Star Wars book to be looking at isn't High Republic 15 this week. I think it's this book right here, High Republic Eye of the Storm, man, number two. Like this, this we, we all know this character, this Marshawn Rowe character is badass. Look at these, mm-hmm. look at how good these covers are. Oh my God. See, all you the know covers this, for that are good this week. Yeah. You know like, what's exactly this one? McClay, no somebody one. got smart. Mm-hmm. McClay, somebody got smart. And you know what they're doing here with this Eye of the Storm and the other one before this, the Star Wars High Republic, these like little mini adventures in here? Uh-huh. They're doing what they did during the Dark Horse era when yep. you got like the Rite of Passage or the Emissaries or. Those, some of those other stuff, they got smart and they're giving us more uh, tact, more finite. Uh, like it's like having a sharper edge on a knife when it comes to Star Wars content. Uh, that's you're you're in, you're out, you're rewarded. You don't need a lot of uh, backstory or history. Just good quality Star Wars content that's kind of like without being uh, a ton, like you know, it's a bunch good, of like man. drawn out miniseries. Yeah. I love this. Love this character. Love the Nile. It's the only good thing that came out of High Republic. Uh, other, you know, other than uh, you, know, you guys know, I love High Republic Adventures. But um, I mean, they also got the gruesome, like gruesome monster creatures now in Star Wars now that are like because of High Republic. I, I think yeah. that's kind of cool. They got like body horror monster shit going on. So maybe we'll see that in Star Wars because we've never really seen anything like that in Star Wars. Yeah, here you go. Here's uh, they, they made this chick look so creepy, man. Uh, what's her name? Um, I oh, always I forget her name. Uh, I just read that. Um, yeah, she came from uh, High Republic. She was uh, on the Warner Comics variant, right? Um, God dang it, I always forget her name. But she is creepy looking when she takes off her mask. So Eye of the Storm had how many variants? Two. It had two. Same with the uh, High Republic 15. This one's not too bad right here. Pascal Ferry one. I like this a lot. What else are you getting tomorrow, Andy? I know another Star Wars book you haven't mentioned yet. You probably pre ordered like 7,000 copies. Second well, print. Uh, yeah, that second, sp- that, that second print Sprouse variant for Darth Vader 20 is out tomorrow. And uh, that was, I think, open ordered. Uh, there should be quite a few out there. I do know that I'm uh, definitely a huge fan. It being the second print of the first cover appearance on a comic book for Din Djarin and Grogu. What so do you think about the word that they're uh, doing a Mandalorian book? It's going to be a direct adaptation. Yeah. June. Yep. That June. was the topic I was wanted to use instead of the Jamie Lee book, but I figured two Star Wars topics. Yeah. Kind of- I don't know about that either. Like, why do a direct adaptation? For insta-key, I guess. Yeah. Is, does that make it an insta-key? I don't Would know. Would that be the probably. first Grogu in a in a comic? Yeah, probably. I don't know. This is so it's going to be the most over-ordered insta-key ever. Yep. And I'll, I'll still be just as happy to order it and read it. That's kind of where I'm at with Star Wars content, like uh, Mandalorian and the stuff mm-hmm. is like, I can't get enough. Would you read uh, a Boba Fett uh, direct adaptation? I would. I would. Oh. I'd, I would. I'd fall for it. Are they, is it really gotta... going to be a direct, though? Yeah, that's yeah. right here. A direct adaptation for Mandalorian. Yeah. It's a maxi, like a like a like an eight issue series or something like that. Something like weird. Yeah. I mean, I was used to that when I was eight in the nineties. Yeah. Like, I don't know, man. Like. Hey, let me have my my nostalgia here. Yeah. 
Is that uh-huh. it for you, Beardo? It is. McClay. Um, I like the Devil's Reign Spider-Man number one just because I like this Rose character. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's a cool, cool character, a cool idea. I like the way he looks. But this Bagley variant looks not very good. Like, is this... Is that Please? Bagley? Yeah. It's supposed that to looks be. like is... a Rose Besh, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. This doesn't look like Bagley. Like, what is this? So I don't know what this is, but I really like, uh, I'm looking forward to this series. Um, so we'll see what happens. Let's see. You're sure, Rose not, Besh. you're sure that's not Bagley? Yeah. Bagley it says variant cover artist Mark Bagley. Um, Bagley, yeah. That's Z so Carlos, maybe. Maybe it's Z Carlos. Huh. I don't see Rose Besh. So. But yeah. uh, this is the regular cover. This m- looks more like Bagley than the yeah. other one. But, right. Yeah, this is that Z Carlos guy. Wow. So, um, but yeah, I like this character. So I'm very interested to see that. Um, another one is Black Panther 4 has got uh, a really. Yeah, that's what I have on mine. That's definitely yeah. Hans cover. It's fucking gorgeous. Yeah, look at this. Yeah. I mean, just kills it. So. That's the one in 25 Stephanie Hans variant for Black Panther number four. I'm already hearing rumors that LCSs are planning on limiting uh, limiting copies to consumers one per. For this one? Yeah. yeah. A lot of the, a lot of the, all the covers for number four, a lot of them are sold out online. Interesting. But that's a nice cover too. I like it that is. Hans variant though. Yeah, the Hans one's really nice. The LaRocca, I haven't seen. Let's take a look at it. I like this one too. This one's oh, not bad. Let me give too. you the tiny picture for that yeah, one. Yeah, like get the hell. Out. Yeah, that's not bad. It's pretty cool. So there's that. I actually like the um the Gwen X. The, this it's Noto, Noto though. I like yeah Noto. because it's Noto and it, these covers have nothing to do with Gwen. I don't know yeah. why they. That's that's not Gwen there. That's 100 percent Jean Grey, right? Like, I. No, that's Gwen. I got a I got a black headband. I can show you. Like yeah. I just put that on. I'm Gwen too. Like that's, yeah. it's got the yeah. And I, yeah, Josh, I'm super excited. I'm a huge yes. Josh Williamson fan, but I'm excited for Zdarsky taking over Batman. 125, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah, this is this is gonna actually have me buying possibly buying Batman on the regular because Zdarsky doing that. <laughs> I'll definitely read it on the regular. That's for sure. Yeah. What when I say buying, I mean reading too. I just kind of yeah yeah. Wait, wait, wait. What do you mean reading and not buying? What what is this? What are we talking about right now? I buy enough comics to yeah. have to buy ever. And maybe maybe they're sending them my way. Maybe that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm also gonna I'm I'm excited about the Zadarsky Batman. I wonder if what the else Bat- are you excited about? Well the Batman. The number movie. one, the movie. no, the movie oh, coming yeah. out. Sorry, yeah. I know it's not really new comedy. I'm going but... to see it too. Yeah. Oh man, are you guys, man? So far, Ooh. all the reviews have been so good. What we got? Um, was this that loaded Bible? Right, blood yeah. on my blood. There's a Scott Forbes cover for that that I actually really loaded like. Bible. Man, I remember this back in the old old school yeah. days. And then Scott, um, I and I love Sealy on on those type books, but that negative Ooh. space Scott Forbes variant. Look at that one. Yeah. Oh, holy crap. Yeah. And there's this one, cover D. This is a follow up series. Yeah. And a blank sketch. But yeah. Is this the one you were talking about, Brian? Yep. Man. Interesting. Yeah. And then um, also from Image, Newburn. Speaking of Chip Zdarsky, yep. has been good. Number four, right? Four comes out tomorrow. Mm hmm. And then, um, yeah, yeah, that I it, like that it's cover. Darsky, but it's it and also, I mean, because that noir stuff, I, I you know, I have like a brew baker vibe to it, but yeah. Um, Rogue Sun number one from Image also comes out tomorrow, which is Ryan Parrott, uh, the whole image superhero stories going off with that, and uh, I mean, Image. Power Rangers, right? I mean, yeah. Ooh, uh, follow. If we're just kind of off shooting off the cuff here, follow me into darkness is the uh, sequel to uh, go up one more. You promised me darkness. Yeah, the, yeah it's yeah. a sequel to you promised me darkness. Book. From where is that, it? I'm not seeing it. Scroll up a little bit more. 
a little bit more right there. Right there, yeah. Similar kind of aesthetic. Yep. Now, um, You Promised Me Darkness was uh, an instant sellout for Behemoth and went to like five or six printings for issue one. And they've all kind of got this negative space, red or black background. And it's one of the first indie comics that I've seen recently, like modern indie comics that did black and white that did as well as it did. That was really enjoyable to read, but also go to like five or six printings on issue one. Uh, I mean, I'm in, I'm actually going to be really interested to read this tomorrow. I'm going to have to make sure I get this on my poll. Hmm. I'm actually excited to also read what if miles Morales came captain America. Yeah. Ooh. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, with the, you know, multiverse, you know, who knows? Where is I show up at some point? Yeah, great variant. I love this one right here. This is the book to get right here. The one in 200. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Because look Whoa. at that right there. What is that? Yeah. It's a real hybrid like, like a spider captain hybrid. Uh, well, that's that's a rough sketch of um, you got it. Miles Morales 28 variant, right? Mm hmm. I like this cover, too. Nice. Wait, wait, you... wait. So he's both Spider-Man and Cap? Yeah. Check out the Jim Lee variant. Or the Jim Where's Lee it? homage. This one right here? Then there's Mike a trade. There's, yeah, there's it's... a trade dress. Oh, so this that's, is bad. That's X-Men. That's two, bad. 288. It's kind of like an homage with... Um, God, you guys help me out right? here in the chat. Yeah, yeah, Captain America. Yeah. Right? There's a... Jim Lee cover with with Captain America and a, a Wolverine. Yeah, Wolverine and Black and, uh, Widow. Black Widow, yeah, yeah, yeah. two sixty five or yeah, two sixty five, right? Two eighty eight or two sixty six or two sixty five. I think it's two sixty five. Maybe I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> One dollar, Bob. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. I think this is bad. I don't think this is good. Where's the trade dress version? Well, yeah, I, I think the thing about the Jim Lee original is. Uh, it's so dynamic, you know. Like mm -hmm. that's what Jim made Lee's it so iconic. So hard to copy. Look how. Yeah, but it's this is not. This looks like Fumetti again. Yeah, it's like we're, it we're going like... back to that Fumetti shit. It's what Mayhew has been doing lately, man. His art seems like he's he's like taking His liberties to not doing stuff. It's like he forgot to add a layer or something. You know, it's like he Guys. missed like four layers of it. Yeah, two six. Okay, so it's it's good from far, but far from good is what I'm hearing. Yeah. <laughs> I just saw the tiny little screen. I'm like, I definitely recognize that. Yeah, it is. It, I mean, yes, it's an homage, but like this, om this, this kind of homage can be done so well. Um, and this looks like you got your friends to cosplay. You took a photo of it and then uh, and you sketched <laughs> over was, it. I thought that was Pikachu for a minute on there. Well, wow, it's too bad. You'll see what Alan Qualls look like. Oh, he looks is white that like, in that. Is that like Miles Morales when he's 65? Uh, that's weird, um, man. Here's the Cl Torrin Clark variant. <laughs> also, the, yeah, Katankers, thanks so much for the sticker and the super chat. There's one other cover, you know, I'm a, I'm a Zenoscope guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, Grim, Grim Fairy Tales, Robin Hood, Shadows of the Past. There's a I go down here. Off. Let me see if I can. Is it's it not on I'm, here? If it's the one I'm thinking of, it does look pretty good. I thought it was Paul Green cover at first, but I'm looking. I always call him Paul Brown for some reason. <laughs> yeah, that's a crazy cover. I love the way a Ghost Rider looks, man. I love that look right there. I saw it earlier. Where did it go? We're on the hunt. Look at that cover. Mm. McGinnis, and he's doing all the, the monsters, the universal monsters. Um, But it's more reminiscent of that uh, other film. Oh, uh, I could... From the he 80s. Has balls. That... He has nards. Wolfman has nards. <laughs> yeah. What was the name? Monster that? Squad. Oh, Monster Squad. Yeah, I remember that seeing that movie. In a, in a, uh, 
a drive-in because it was sold out everywhere. And my dad's like, fuck it. We're going to the drive-in. We're going to see this movie tonight. McClay, uh, hmm. third row from the bottom for that Zoomscope book. Okay. And I can see exactly why Brian's into this. <laughs> third row from the bottom and third one at, wait, three, two, that's three. Two. Oh, your screen's different. Than, there it is. Right there, the orange. This one? No. no. Back. Look at that one. That one's good, too, with all the yeah. skulls. All right, the Iron back. Fist? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, it'll be uh, Shadows of the Past, probably. They want you to think it is. Yeah. Right uh, there. Scroll to the right. Go two more. Right there. Robin Hood, Shadows of the Past 2. Yeah. Or pa- click Shadows on that, and then it's the that cover right there. Reminds cover me of Paul C? Green. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Wow. But it's like... Igor Lomov or Igor. Sorry, I'm horrible with names. But yeah, that's cool. It's cover art. Yeah, that's good cover art. Oh man, I would get a cramp in my neck if I turn that that far. And then um, also that latest something's killing the children. The slaughter pack number two. The David Mack covers for issues six through ten comes out tomorrow. Yeah. Yep. Forty bucks or something like that. Yeah. But, Dan, did you have any other picks? Uh, you guys said a lot of them, but I guess I'm going to go with uh, Monkey Prince issue two because um, yes. Jean Yoon Lang, Jean Yoon Lang, or Jean, you know, that guy, Jean, you know, the writer. Um, he's a genius, you guys. Yeah. Um, Where is he's it? extremely good at writing. And so far, this Monkey Prince series is actually really well written. It's putting out a lot of interesting ideas and concepts into the superhero genre. There you go. And no, more. I think the Monkey Prince can be no, a really big, big character, and not just DC. Like I think in the DCEU, the Monkey Prince can be a huge hit. It's a, it's got a Shazam, Shazam kind of vibe. This cover right here is good. It's also about like PTSD, um, in the superhero universe, and you know, Peacemaker, you know, dealt with that too. Monkey Prince is dealing with that. I like that aspect. Um. I love how you can knock off his head and he still lives and then kick it around. Yeah. I mean, the monkey prince is a, I mean, the monkey King, right. Uh, is, is a such a historic character. I can't believe it wasn't done already. Actually, yeah. I was, I'm, I've been right. I write, I wrote a pilot about a superhero world and the monkey King is in my story, but he's Didn't like, a a- in my, my comp, my story or whatever. And then this came out and I was like, mother fuck. Right. But, um, it's worth it. I know. I think it's worth it. Um, Didn't they do a anime based on the Monkey Prince, the Monkey King? They've done a, a. I mean, technically, Dragon Ball is a retelling of the Monkey King. Really? Yes. Because wow. he's got the monkey tail, and he turns into a giant monkey thing, and it's technically it's a retelling of Monkey King actually. And his name Son Goku is Hono Gong. It's the same. They have the same name. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I don't know. People don't know that, but Dragon Ball is Monkey King as well. And Journey to the West is that what you it is? bring? Yeah, Journey to the West, and you bring this into the DCU. Like China is gonna go nuts, and they know that man. Warner Brothers is not. They're aware of the potential in this character. Um, it's huge, uh, but it's well written too. That's the, that's the thing. This is a really well written series. Um, it's also still a key we can say you can get the Asian Festival of Heroes, whatever DC Asian Festival of Heroes, which is the first appearance of this character, yeah. which I'd recommend picking up because if this thing blows up, um, yeah, but it's it's a well written character, so that's a tough thing to get too. It's a that that one you were talking about, that Asian, what was it called? DC Festival of Asian something because it was like an eight dollar book and nobody yeah. wants those anthology garbage books, right? Yeah. But um, it did have the first appearance of this character and and then there's a one in fifty variant, which you know is now doing well, I guess, um, because it, since the series came out and people really like the series, so we'll see what happens. Um, but I think it's a no brainer. I think for this character to enter DCEU is a no brainer. Um. It would be a, a mistake not to bring this character into live action. Now, is this going to be a full ongoing series, or are they maxi series, or mini series, or? I think this is a mini series, but I, I don't. Right I now, it's two of four. Verify that at the moment. Oh Brian. yeah, I should have read it right there. It says two of four. I'm blind. 
And yeah, this guy, you know, Gene Lun Yang. Yes, he wrote American Born Chinese. He wrote Gordon Yamamoto and the King of the Geeks, which is his first series, which I bought. He won that through the Zarek Grant made by Peter Laird. Do you guys know the Zarek Grant? Mm-hmm. I've heard of Peter Laird, though. Oh, yeah. So he, he gave out a grant to up-and-coming comic book creators. Um, David Cho won the Zarek Grant. So did, uh, like, I think Jeff Lemire, right? It's like wow. a bunch of big people, yeah. So, And that's great of Peter Laird to do that. He was just giving out grants to up-and- But they stopped it because comics became a lot easier to make these days. It's actually easier now to make comics than ever before. So if you ever feel like making a comic, this is the time. It's never been easier. Blah, 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 blah. I'm just going off on tangents, but. Hell yeah. Amen. Bunch of great picks. A lot of great books coming out tomorrow for New Comic Book Day.